Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Silhouette Paint Masterclass. As a paint artist, you might have already did hundreds of marker removal shots. In visual effects, we always see there are lots of green screen and blue screen shoots and in most cases, there will be lots of markers interacting with the objects and characters as well as there will be markers without interacting as well. So we are going to check out a couple of shots here where markers don't have any interactions and vice versa. So in my first shot, it's pretty easy and simple and straightforward shot where we can pretty much use auto paint to remove the markers. By the way, if you didn't check out my last tutorial about auto paint, please go ahead and watch that tutorial before watching this one because I'm going to use auto paint entirely in today's tutorial. Pause this tutorial here and watch my previous one and come back to this after that. So this is a footage from the Blender library. Let me show you how this footage looks like and then proceed from there. As you can see, there are no complex camera movements here, uh, but I can see there is a slight rack focus animation here. It's not that tough to remove these markers because it don't have any interactions. Let's suppose if I'm going to remove these markers, if you're viewing in the color channel, you won't be able to see the entire marker precisely. For that, you can just go into individual channels. Uh, here I have a red marker, so I will go into the red channel, click over here or you can simply press alt r you can see the marker very clearly here yep so we can do this by a couple of methods here the first one can be using silhouettes new in paint node and the second one by using auto paint so before doing anything make sure you are degraining the plate the next step should be taking in paint node so tab in paint sorry in paint there we go I will connect that into my footage. I have made a detailed tutorial about InPaint. So here I'm going to show you a rough glimpse. You can watch that specific tutorial on InPaint for more detailed description. So I'm going to take a circle node and uh, just draw a circle right over here. As you can see, the marker is completely removed. But if you can see here, it's not tracked, right? For tracking, I can simply create a layer. Just go into the tracker, mocha tracker. Just go into foreground and uh, let's track and see how it looks like. It's not that bad, but you can see I have accidentally turned on shear and perspective. In this shot, I don't think we need all these transformations. I'm going to retrack it. It's not that an easy shot to track because you can see there are some color variations here because of the light changes, but this definitely looks like a decent track for at least this purpose. I'm going to adjust this a bit. Let's keep it over here. And if you go into the output mode, you can see you can turn off the overlay by pressing zero in the keyboard and just play and see how it looks like. That's perfect. If you're seeing some sharp edges or something, you can just blur the layer or even you can tune into these properties. There are lots of options. Uh, as I just mentioned, I have made a specific tutorial on in paint. So I'm not going to explain all these properties and all these things. Just check out that tutorial. Yeah, this is one method or let's remove something from this side. So I made sure I have connected a roto node into my paint node using data pipes. Just go into the roto node and click on the tracker properties. This time I'm using point tracker, alt click. Oops, that was a really bad track. So here I'm going to take point tracker again and go into the last frame. Just drop a point tracker. If you right click over here, go into channel. I'm just choosing red channel here because the marker is mostly visible in the red channel. Let's track and see how this result looks like. Cool, so it looks great. Not that bad. So create a layer apply this tracking data into this layer so layer one should be the track layer for this marker so go into the paint node transform layer one and uh, i can simply use drag tool here now select all our strokes and always make sure you selected the right transform data click on match move i have used all frames here click on this play button you can see the marker is completely painted out yeah this looks awesome so I know this is a pretty straightforward shot where we can remove the stuff very easily. So let's go and check out another footage which I downloaded from Action VFX free asset package or something. Marker Remove 2 and you can see so this footage is downloaded from actionvfx.com. They have lots of footages in their library. This is not a paid promotion. So check out their website. Here I'm making sure my last frame will be 93 typing in 93 here let's play and see how our footage looks like also in this shot we have comparatively a different kind of camera movement zooming out we need at least two point track here and also one more interesting thing is that there are some light flickers and uh, light color changes here so that will also affect our work 
Usually I see most people do this kind of shots in new using transform mask. It's easy but but in some cases just like this where there are color differences between one area to the other matching grade in those kind of situations are very tricky but using silhouette these kind of situations are very easy to handle. As you can see there is a slight color change here. Also the interesting thing is that there are interactions. Obviously the first step should be tracking. So let's go into the roto node. I'm going to track this manually. If you have camera data you can export point trackers from there. Uh, go to tracker problem point tracker and making sure this is the last frame where I can get access of this tracker completely so I'm going to add a point here maybe at this edge and uh, let's track backwards as I just mentioned earlier you can use channels for tracking so let's track let's try this frame increase the search area we got a decent track here. In this shot, we have sort of a different camera move that is like zooming out. We might need to create a two point track. Let's create a point over here. Both of these markers are in the same plane. So let's track and see how this goes. It looks okay to me. Uh, selecting both the trackers and uh, go into the first frame. Selecting the layer as well. Apply. We can access rotation as well as scaling. Click on OK. Now go to paint node. Already made sure layer one is selected. Let's paint out this marker. In this frame, I'm going to take track tool. Looks good. Select all the paint history and make sure you have checked this match move option. Yep, just click on play selected. Nope, you shouldn't do that. Why? Because we have character interactions here. Just find which is the frame where we can see the entire marker. So it should be till frame 47. Just go into the last frame and select all the stroke. Choose custom and type in 47 to 93. Now click on play selected events. As you can see, we have painted out till frame 47 and next few frames we are going to skip. And now we have to do the second half. So let's paint out this frame. I don't want the tutorial to be that long, so I'm gonna stop it here. One other trick which you can do here is that go to 43 and you can take clone tool and choose output. Click on caps lock or Q. Turn off the subpixel and also make sure you are inside the onion skin overlay. Just increase the frame. You can see at frame 47 we have a clean green screen so I can just match this frame. The reason why I am not using this method is that I have to explain manual painting in another tutorial. So here I am going to follow my first method that is going into frame 1 and painting it out from scratch making sure my paint strokes are selected. Also the work range is as per my need. Click on playback. So now we have painted out that stroke in every frames except the frames where we have interaction. I can simply come into that specific frame, just paint it off. This can be painted from the next frame and this frame can be painted from the previous frame, which obviously I'm not going to explain in this particular video. There will be a follow-up tutorial for manual paint. We'll be explaining that in that particular video. Yep, so this looks, let's go into stabilize view and check how the result looks like. It looks pretty decent here. There we go. We have painted out that marker from this shot. Using this simple method, you can paint out any number of markers from any kind of shots with any kind of camera motion. It's that simple. So start using silhouette for your marker removal shots. Just like always, if you like this tutorial, please hit that like button and share this with your colleagues who are in need of paint knowledge. I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for watching.